and it's a hikey look we love hikey outfits not hikey outfits we don't go hiking well you might but i don't <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been a busy few weeks and it's just about to get a whole lot busier. November is always crazy for me and then December is Christmas and last year I just decided to pack so much into the festive season to make up for lost time. And I'm thinking of doing the same again this year because I just had the most wonderful December last year. It's about to get crazy very quickly so I thought today we'd just do a nice chilled video. I've been like sorting through my wardrobe this week, all of like the new pieces from autumn winter like haul week and my travels. So today I'm going to be showing you what is new in my wardrobe for autumn winter and how I'm going to be styling them for the upcoming season. However, before we get to that, I do have some very exciting news for you guys. As you've probably noticed, it's been very quiet on the Flossy by Freddy front. Over the past few months, we had our big launch in June, which was the best day ever. And then a few weeks later, after we sold out our debut collection, we moved on to the pre-orders. So we held a pre-order for about a week where people basically paid us for the dresses, but then had to actually wait three months for them to be produced and shipped and last week all of the pre-orders were shipped out and it was just the best feeling to see people posting their pink boxes but I know that there were still some people who missed out on the launch, missed out on the pre-order and are still really desperate to get their hands on a dress from my Overture collection. So I'm very excited to tell you that we are actually doing a very small limited restock of the Flossy by Freddy Overture collection and it is live right now. So this restock is basically made up of pieces from returns, cancellations, but also when we placed the order for everyone's pre-order um, in July, I was obviously conscious that some people would not want to um, do the pre-order, pay £150 for something and then have to wait three months for it to arrive. Like I understand that was quite a big ask of people, which is why I'm so truly grateful and overwhelmed by the people that did do it. But I knew that there would be lots of people that were not comfortable with that and would rather just um, buy a dress and be able to receive it immediately. So we did place a few extra orders along with the pre-orders to enable us to do a very small limited restock today. So it's very, very exciting. If anybody wants any information on like sizing or returns or like those general questions, if you guys head to the Flossy by Freddy Instagram page, I have a highlight on that with all of the questions that I've been asked by customers and we have replied to them um, on our Instagram stories and put them in the highlights. I'm also really excited to tell you guys that we've now enabled Klarna on Flossy by Freddy. It took a really long time to process, but we finally got it through. So now you're actually able to pay for the dress in three installments, completely interest-free free and don't forget that we also will have our autumn winter collection coming very very soon so also please do bear that in mind when shopping the restock i know there's going to be people asking me should i get an overture dress or wait for autumn winter if you kind of can only have one and what i would say is just go with your heart if you missed out on the overture collection last time and you have felt really sad about it really wistful that you really wished that you had got one then go for the overture because it is the classic it is i think probably the most special collection i'll ever do it's the most personal one to me and they're the three dresses that really I think define the brand although I have to say I mean I've literally got my autumn winter dresses either side of me hung up on my doors um, and they are just spectacular. <laughs> I wish I could show you now, but I can't, but you guys are not going to have to wait long at all. So with that, I'm going to show you guys how I style my Flossy by Freddy Overture collection dresses for autumn winter. Even though it was technically a spring summer collection because we launched in June, when I was designing the dresses, I was trying really hard to keep in mind that I wanted these to be versatile dresses that you could just get so much wear out of because you could wear them all year round. So in case you guys were worried about that, I'm going to quickly show you how I style the dresses for autumn winter. Okay, so for First of all, we of course have the Coco. I always say that I feel like this is the most versatile dress out of the three to wear all year round. When I was designing it, I was really conscious. I was like, I want this to be a spring, summer, autumn, winter dress. So in summer, you're supposed to wear it sleeveless, which is a really gorgeous look. In cool spring and warm autumn, you can layer it with like a nice silky blouse, which you guys have seen me do plenty of times. Something like this, for example, with a little bow sticking out of the neckline, I absolutely love. Or in winter, when it's cold, there is enough room in the dress to be able to layer it with a knitted turtle 
turtleneck like this one. I also made the trim a little bit off white just to make it as versatile as possible for you guys when pairing it with various tops. You can wear it with white or cream or pink. Also this fabric is surprisingly warm. It is woven, it's also lined. So this dress actually keeps you very warm. So enough babbling, let's try it on. So this is the exact outfit that I was wearing in New York when it was absolutely freezing. I was vlogging as well and I was like keeping my coat up at all times when I was vlogging because I hadn't shown you guys the dress yet. Um, but basically I've just got my little cashmere turtleneck underneath. Um, this one is from Marks and Spencers and it actually matches the um, trim on the dress really, really well. And then literally just a gorgeous coat thrown over the top. I love pairing my Santini coat with this because I just think the colour, like this ivory off-white goes so well. But honestly, like any white coat, if you have like a white faux fur like me or a pink faux fur, um, literally anything, like a white wool, a pink wool, anything that can kind of tone in with the colour palette in the dress, like brown as well would be fine because this um, blush in the boucle is quite like a brownish rose. You could even add a little beret, white or pink guys. I think white. Berry on, I think I just got this one from Amazon, honestly, last Christmas. And of course, a little handbag to finish off the look. And then for footwear, I think footwear is the hardest thing with an outfit like this because obviously it's all very light colors. So for me, obviously the ideal um, shoe scenario would be my white boots. Um, that to me is like the perfect look. But obviously I know that not everyone managed to get their hands on the best boots in the world from River Island that year. So I'm going to just pop on my black over the knee boots. I feel like that's the most standard colour of boot that most people have um, and that are easiest to get. So let's see what it actually looks like with black over the knee boots. So here is how it is looking with black OTKs. And honestly guys, I feel like it's not ideal. I'd always prefer them to be um, a light colour, but I really don't feel like it kills it at all. I just feel like black boots are such a staple. And I think where they're all like nice, neutral, classic colours, um, it really doesn't look bad at all. And to make it look even better, I would add a pair of like black cat eye sunglasses just to make a little connection between the top and bottom just so the boots aren't the only black thing in the look. Literally a pair of sunglasses would do it perfectly. But yeah, guys, honestly, this is just such a toasty look for winter. Obviously, if you don't want your little thighs getting cold, you could just throw on a pair of like sheer tights um, just to make sure that your legs stay warm. But for me, this is such a chic look and a gorgeous, gorgeous way to wear the cocoa in winter. When I wear it like this, I honestly can't even picture it as a spring summer dress. Next, we have the Fay, the stunning, stunning Fay. This dress just has my heart. Like, I just love this dress so, so much. It really is just so unique. And I've had multiple people tell me now, including Josie, the queen of Zimmerman, that the quality is equal. She said better than. I'm not going to claim that my dresses are better quality than Zimmerman, but we will say that they are equal to and lots of people have said that that is not just me saying it so this dress i think people kind of see as summer because it's linen and it's cream but actually i took this to florida with me in july and there was no way that i could wear it because it was way too hot it's because um the lining and everything was so important to me a nice thick quality to the fabric so they're actually really really great dresses for colder weather also you guys just know how much i love mixing and matching neutral tones in autumn so for autumn Autumn, I would totally go just all of the browns, browns, cream, beige, camel, and just throw it all together with this gorgeous off-white dress. So let's style it up. Oh my gosh, I just love styling the Fae for autumn winter. I think it's such a transformation. This can so easily be the perfect spring summer dress with a little pair of sandals and a cute like basket bag but just pair some kind of like brown tones and really play on that neutral color palette with of course some brown over the knee boots and it's just totally totally transformed i've just popped on a little brown headband but i was just thinking we could do like a camel beret should we just try another beret oh my gosh i cannot actually cope with how cute the fade dress looks with a beret although i feel like there's too many shades of brown going on right now they are all a bit mismatched so i just grabbed like a few bags just to show you how like versatile it is styling wise so you can do like a cute little coach tabby shoulder bag vibe either in off-white or brown I just feel like the camel and the brown is not gelling that well but maybe with the cream it looks really super super cute the Chloe test bag I feel like this gives the whole look a very like bohemian 
Parisian fusion chic vibe. Or something very classic and ladylike such as this little mulberry top handle tote. Looks absolutely lovely. Let's try a couple of coats. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely fantastic. So my Zara cape is having a major resurrection this year and I just think it goes really, really nicely. The beret was throwing me off. So I popped on a little black velvet headband to match the um, faux fur color of the cape. And I'm just loving it. I also feel like I would put the black boots on with this. Like just because it's white, like off white doesn't mean you can't mix and match it with like darker more autumn winter colors i also just had to pair it with only the most classic thing a girl can have in her wardrobe a trench coat this is my burberry one but obviously you can wear any trench coat you like and i think it's absolutely lovely i love um the lines of this how the trench coat just finishes a little bit lower than the dress you get that lovely shape um and yeah i feel like again the black boots would be absolutely fine with this even though i've still got my brown ones on so yeah i mean that's how you can wear the face in autumn winter um i think with that nice thick sumptuous fabric um and then the extra added layer of the coat or cape or whatever it is you want to go for it actually makes it very very wearable for autumn winter and then finally my lovely sweet beautiful nelly this dress just need i say more this is truly the ultimate christmas party dress it really is look at the buttons they could literally pass for snowflakes it's like a sugar plum fairy dress i just think if you have any occasion coming up this festive season or even next year like if you have a birthday coming up next year or a graduation or anything like that every girl needs a beautiful unique occasion dress in their wardrobe something that they can wear that they know they're not going to show up and every other girl is going to be in it aka the zara dress at ascot but it happens every year there's like a big kind of social occasion and there's like six girls wearing the same dress and that will never happen to you with the Nelly unless all of your friends like Flossie by Freddie and then and then it might do so you might have to chuck that I know that so many girls have already worn this as their birthday dress which makes me feel so honored I also had a girl who is an organist and wore this for her recital it's just special and timeless you'll feel like a princess in it and I feel like it's also the perfect Christmas gift I mean all three of the dresses really, if there are any boyfriends or husbands watching or parents or siblings, friends, anyone, um, there will be nothing better this Christmas morning than to open a pink Flossie by Freddie box. Now let's try my lovely Nelly on. Oh, this dress, this dress just brings me so much joy. Like just look at it, look at the shape. I'm telling you, when you are doing your Christmas shopping, you will not find another dress like Nelly, I'm telling you. I promise that you'll never find another like the it and it's just so so easy to style for a party like it kind of does all of the work for you I love how because the buttons are a mix of like faux pearls and faux diamonds you can go with like pearls or diamante or both which is really really fun but I love opting for a little pearl bag with this dress a cute little headband and honestly pretty much any of my party heels go with this dress but I just popped on my little Mimi ones because I wore these the other day and just loved them so much how fun is this party look i'm literally obsessed like in this dress you shall be the belle of the ball um it's my favorite <laughs> So guys, that is how I style the Overture collection for Autumn Winter. I hope it gave you some inspiration. The collection is live now, it will all be linked down below. And remember, it's very, very likely that this will be your last chance to purchase a dress from the Overture collection, so do not miss out. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys some of the outfits that I've been wearing over the last few weeks of autumn, and outfits that I anticipate I'll be wearing as well um, for the next few weeks until it gets like super duper wrap up warm kind of cold. It's gonna be a mix of new pieces Pieces, old pieces but I'll link everything I can down below in the description box so guys I thought we could film the rest of the video from um, this angle because I've never done it before it's a little bit chaotic but I really love it and look at my new curtain it was my birthday present from my mum and she made it basically I'm obsessed so the first thing is this pink skirt which if you follow me on TikTok you will have already seen um so I got this from Farfetch when I tried it on I got super excited I was like oh so cute like it feels like such a nice quality it's cozy it's like a really beautiful wool and i kept it decided to keep it and i'm feeling an ever so slight little pang of regret actually because in hindsight i think it's too expensive for what it is and i think i just got a little bit overexcited and i wish it was a tiny bit longer for the price like it needs to be perfect and actually 
in hindsight, I think maybe I should have returned this, but I'm stuck with it now and I do really like it. It's super cute and it's so soft. Like it's actually a super cozy little skirt. It's just a little bit short, but I'm gonna show you how I would style it. So I actually did this as a styling video on TikTok. So it's kind of similar to the way that I would style like my Coco dress. I feel like when you have pink, you're slightly limited on your color palette options because not that much actually goes with pink. So my ideal way of styling this is gonna be with like a white or light colored coat. I'm like really favoring this one at the moment because it's just, I just love this Santini coat. I have a couple and I have a couple of other Santinis in like lighter colors. I've also got like a white faux fur that I could pair with this and the light colored trench coat, anything like that. But there's just something about this coat. I'm just, I just feel like it's so, it's so me. This is actually quite a good filming view, guys, because you get like the back view in the mirror as well. My instinct is to always go with the white boots, obviously, because it just completes the look. And I know that it's hard when like you guys watch my videos and you don't have the exact pieces that I've got. But if anything, I just hope it makes you think that like next time I really go on about something in a haul, if you're in two minds about getting it, when I say that I really love something like, and I keep it, I'll wear it over and over and over again. And you guys know these boots have just, they've seen it all. So I feel like the Chanel bag is a must with this. It just completes that really gorgeous, light, bright, pinky white color palette. Um, in my TikTok video, I actually donned a berry, but I feel like we've done berries today with the cocoa dress. So we don't need to do that. I was wondering whether my pink Burberry scarf would be too much. Should we just try it for fun? Let's have a look. Oh my gosh, the shade really matches. Like it's a little bit darker and duskier, but I feel like the tone is exactly the same. Ooh, okay, well, it's it makes it a little bit OTT. I feel like every time you add more pink, you're just like, you're going for it. You've made that decision and I, think it looks really cute I actually do it just depends like I know some people just love pink and want to go for the full-on pinkest girliest look and some people like want to be cautious with their pink and just add a little pop so this is like going full-on um this scarf by the way guys like if you are one of those people that just Cinderella is staring at me if you are one of those people that just wants that little pop then this scarf is actually so perfect um but yeah it's a very cute look I feel like it's very me I would wear this outfit like if I was going somewhere where I would be seen if that makes sense like I'm not going to wear this to go out just to you know do something casual by myself I'm going to wear this if I've got like an event or a meeting or I'm doing something with friends it's definitely not a low-key look which is fine it's a high-key look we love high-key outfits not high-key outfits we don't go hiking well you might but I don't but yeah I'm really loving this this is such I feel like a typical Freddy winter outfit minus there's a little too much bare leg going on. I might need to pop on some sheer tights with this. So this Karen Millen skirt, I've been getting a lot of wear out of. You guys will have seen this if you watched my Toronto vlog. I wore this um, the day that we went to Niagara Falls and I'm kind of gonna recreate that look with a couple of um, a couple of changes. Just keeping it with this white turtleneck. I literally wear with everything. Got this from Zara like, goodness about four years ago maybe five years ago anyway the skirt I feel like you guys will still be able to get and I think it's such a lovely wardrobe staple I love the camel color I love these little like button tabs at the side it's just a really small but like chic detail I love the shape that little a line it's like smart and sophisticated but it's also youthful and fun which is what I really like to combine if I can so for me the brown Straight whites and over the knee boots are just a no brainer. So I got these in 2000 and I think I got these in 2020. I can't remember, it was either 2019 or 2020. And I just know that last year they didn't have them. They didn't bring them back, not in the dark brown suede, like in the perfect style and um, you couldn't get them. So I'm really excited they brought pretty much the exact same boots back this year. They look a lot darker on camera than they do in real life. They almost look black on camera but in real life they're just a lovely um dark like chocolatey brown for me this is definitely a trench coat vibe i feel like this whole look is very like city chic like a little coach shoulder bag um anything in like a neutral color i think works really well and just because i was inspired by the pink burberry scarf i'm just thinking of throwing on my little like camel neutral one i mean yeah i think it looks so good and this for me again is just like a staple 
easy throw on don't need to think about it outfit um living in london especially i think this is just such a london look not that you need to live in london of course to do a london look but yeah i really love this outfit it's just easy and such a classic okay next we have another skirt um one that you haven't seen me style yet this will be one that my North American followers will be happy about because this is from Aritzia. I got this in Toronto, in Canada, and absolutely love it. I remember being really torn in the shop because they basically did all of their skirts in two lengths. It was like mini and micro mini. And I tried both of them on and the micro mini was just like, it was too short. But then when you tried this one on next to it, this looked so long, like next to the micro mini. And I was like really torn because I knew that this one was like a more, just a better length for me and my height. But I was like, does it look really, really long? But weirdly, now that I've got it home, it doesn't feel that long to me. I think it was just because next to the micro mini, it did look so much longer, but it's actually an amazing, amazing length. And I'm so grateful that they made this because my problem with being a little bit above average height is I love mini skirts, but often um, they are a tiny bit too short. So I've just paired this with my um, M&S cashmere jumper, which I absolutely love. Honestly, M&S is great for those basic staples. You guys know that I am a brown tights girl. Um, I just think if you have to wear tights, which sometimes you do, especially if you want to go for cute little like ankle booties rather than over the knee boots, um, black is just, black just ruins outfits. Unless you're wearing like an all black look, of course. Also, I feel like if they're very sheer black, they're like 10, 20 denier then they're okay but you know like solid black tights i just do not like the way it looks i think brown is much softer um and it kind of looks more like you're making a style choice rather than like i'm just wearing black tights because that's what you wear when it's cold you know you catch my vibe guys i know you do so these are my little stuart weitzman booties and again this year they have brought them back, which is great. I love it when designers do that because you just know that your piece is a classic. And I don't know if all of you guys watching this will have seen my Toronto vlog, but clever Freddie decided to wear her brown suede Stuart Weitzman boots to Niagara Falls. Yeah, I'm so smart. And yes, they got absolutely and utterly soaked. And I was like, I'm literally gonna have to throw them away because I had not protected them. Even though I have suede protector in my cupboard, I hadn't bothered to use it. But I managed to salvage them. I'll tell you really quickly in case you guys are ever in the same position. The first thing you need to do is blot as much of the water up as you can. So I literally just had to go to the toilet and get loads of toilet paper. I pulled literally the whole roll out and I spent ages like blotting the water out. Luckily, I had my soft bristle hairbrush in my bag in the car. So what you need to do is basically brush the leather as it's drying to keep that like distressed suede look. Otherwise they dry really kind of like flat and almost a bit shiny and it looks awful. So that's the trick and I managed to save my boots. So I was just thinking like of pairing, you know, my white Santini coat with this again, but I thought, why don't we try something different? So I have had this Santini coat, this one in the rosa color for a couple of years now and it's my least worn out of all of my coats, like my Santini coats. It's a bit more out there, but then again, it's just really fun and I feel like with a very neutral outfit like this, especially one that has some kind of dark tones, I'm wearing a black headband, dark skirt, you know, like dark legs, it kind of balances it out a bit and it's not that like soft pastel baby pink like the skirt where I feel like if you pair it with darker colours it totally ruins it. I know I'm babbling but does that make sense guys? Like when it's a kind of darker, duskier tone it goes a lot better with these dark colours and it looks really good. So let's try it on, it's such a beautiful coat. Just wait till you see the sleeves guys with the button, it's an adorable collar. Yeah, I actually love how these look together. I think the pink is perfect with the dark brown and it just adds that gorgeous, like fun, girly touch um, to this quite kind of slightly plain look. And then I just thought my D&G um, quilted Sicily bag would go really nicely with this. I love this bag, so glad I bought it. Do you guys remember I was in two minds because I already had the nude Sicily and this is almost the same color. It's slightly different, but it's almost the same. It's just quilted. And I was like, oh, can I justify getting it when I've already got such a similar bag? But actually I wear them both so much. And to me, in my eyes, they're very different. This is like strictly an autumn winter bag for me. And I just love it. It goes with everything. They've also got this in stock um, on Farfetch at the moment. And guys, if you want to wait until next week, I will have my discount code next week for Farfetch where you can get 10% off. 
I'm actually not reading. I don't know why I'm such a chatterbox today. Um, but yeah, I'm loving how these look together. So glad I thought to pair the pink coat with this outfit. Um, I'm definitely going to take this on the town at some point next week. <laughs> so next up, um, again, if you guys have watched my Toronto vlog, you would have seen this. And also it was in haul week. This is an outfit that I have actually ended up wearing so much more than I expected to. Even when I got it, I was like, I'm going to keep it because I love it. But I wonder how much where I'm actually going to get out of this, like how many times this year will I actually put this on and think, yeah, this is the look I'm going to go with. But actually, I've worn it like four times um, so far, which is quite a lot. So it's a little matching set from And Other Stories. It is just, I feel, so cute, so classic. I love how it's very like sensible and a bit old-fashioned, but where the skirt's like super, super short, you get that like fun um, like youthful edge to something that's kind of like that kind of reminds me of like Emily Gilmore from Gilmore Girls. I'm actually lying to you slightly because I have been pairing it with my over the knee boots but just because I have these tights and these boots on I just um, thought I'd see what it looks like um, this way and I actually really like it it's very cute um, also I've been wearing it with like a camel turtleneck but again just because I had this one on um, I thought I'd see how it looked. I tried it on um, before with my white Zara one that I had on earlier and it didn't look good but where this M&S one is like slightly off-white it just sits a lot better I think with the outfit. It still looked really good with the camel tassel like though I think it would also look great with dark brown or even like an ivory um, blouse with a big bow would look superb. So there's lots of different combinations you can do with this. There's lots of different colours in the tweed so you can do lots of different combos with colours and again just this bag it goes with everything I think it really elevates every look makes it look so stylish and chic um, and yeah I just love this I think it's a classic but also fun so next up is another piece that definitely surprised me I tried this on in my autumn haul week when I first tried it on I was like hmm, I'm not sure it's a bit different I'm not sure if I like it but then as the clip went on it was just growing on me more and more and when it came to doing my return for the order I was like do you know what I just had like a screw it moment I'm just gonna keep it and see what happens because it's nice to sometimes try something a bit different so this is another look the third look that I wore in Toronto but I've also worn it um, at home as well with the over the knee boots I feel like the tights kind of look cute as well on the thigh um, and it will also just keep you nice and warm I do sometimes worry that you guys might think I'm a bit of a stuck record with stuff like um boots and bags but the thing is they're so expensive and I truly believe that like if you are investing that kind of money in to something you really have to wear it like a million times to get that cost per wear down and I feel like with stuff like my Stuart Whites and boots and my D&G bag like I've proved to you that those purchases were worthwhile for me at least honestly if I lost these boots or ruined them I would definitely repurchase them even though they're so expensive but they just are such a staple in my wardrobe and I get so much wear out of them. So the dress is actually a brown corduroy pinafore but the blouse section is attached and it also does have a zip down the side and I just think it's really cute like it's really cool it's a bit different it kind of reminds me of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. It's kind of got the girly feminine vibe that I go for but I feel like it has a bit more of an edge to it. Um, this is like about as edgy as I'll ever get guys. And then on all three occasions that I've worn this dress which was first of all to the Hocus Pocus screening, then on my day out in Toronto, and then the third one was for JJ's birthday when um, our friends and us went out for his birthday. And this is what I wore. I put my Zara cape over the top of it. This cape I literally got in 2015, so it's one of the longest standing pieces at this point in my wardrobe. And for a couple of years, I kind of went off it and didn't really wear it, but there was just something telling me, like in all of those clear outs that I did, do not get rid of this cape like this is something special and I'm so glad I didn't get rid of it because I think it's so special everybody always asks me where this is from and I'm like I'm so sorry it's really old it's very witchy but it's also very Blair very gossip girl as well quite New York and um, I love it and it's definitely having its resurrection in my wardrobe this year so guys those are the few outfits that I've mainly been wearing but I did also keep a few other things from haul week that I just haven't really styled up yet um, I'm sure I will do but I didn't want to like just put them in that section because I feel like it would have felt a bit disingenuous but these are the pieces that um, I kept from haul week but haven't styled just yet so the first thing is this H&M cardigan I just loved the outfits that I styled in the H&M haul like honestly I was just living for them and I kept um, only this because 
I didn't want to go too wild like and keep a bunch of new clothes I was like I'll just choose my favorite piece from my favorite outfit and because I already had the skirt and like a blouse that would be very very similar I just kept um the cardigan so yeah I need to style this up it's just something a bit different for me because I don't do cardigans so I think that's why I've been a bit hesitant I also kept the Abercrombie skirt and there's honestly no real reason why I haven't worn this yet like I really don't know why I need to make more of an effort I think I'm just like I'm very stuck in my ways when I go to a brown skirt I immediately just go to like my top shop skirt so I need to just like get used to reaching for another brown skirt because that's like my go-to but this is really cute I'm very glad I kept it no regrets I also kept the Abercrombie flared trousers now I have actually worn these once I wore these to the supermarket with I think I just had this top on actually and yeah it was like a bit different because as you guys know I'm not really a trouser wearer like this is something quite different for me um but I'm glad I'm proud of myself that I wore them once um and I think I'll I'll hopefully wear them again I think it's just because it's not like so so me like I'll always choose to wear a skirt over trousers if I can and where the weather has been like fairly mild I haven't had to wear trousers and then the last piece um that I haven't really styled much yet is this Abercrombie top I love it it's so so soft I think again it's just a bit different I'm so stuck in my ways I love a high neck I love a turtleneck so when something has a bit of a different neckline this has kind of like a sweetheart with a little um V dip and then I just get freaked out because I'm like oh I don't know I don't wear this kind of thing um, and also it's hard in winter I think because like your chest is bare and I like to because I often wear bare legs because I like to wear mini skirts and like boots I feel like I have to be warmer on top so I usually always wear like a high neck to make sure I'm toasty on my top half so that I can get away with having like slightly chilly legs which is probably why I haven't reached for this but I still don't regret keeping it because I think it's really beautiful and really classic I feel like this might be more of like a lounge top for me or like a travel top like when I go on a plane journey because it's so soft and stretchy and comfortable so I feel like this will be a really lovely travel top with just like some nice joggers if I'm going on a plane and I actually haven't got any new shoes or bags this season, which is is quite unlike me. There's one bag that I've really got my heart set on, but I just think it's too expensive. Guys, I really want the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse, just in like the classic brown damier canvas. You guys know how much I love my pink one. It's one of my favorite, favorite bags. It is so durable and it's the best but I just want like a nice neutral one to go with like other outfits, but I think it's too expensive, so that's why I haven't bought it. But I would honestly consider buying one at second hand because um, if I was gonna buy my one now that I've had for nearly four years, I'm um, in the condition that that's in, I would be so happy with that because it's almost perfect and hopefully it will be a little bit cheaper. So I'll keep you posted on that. Oh, I lied, I actually do have one pair of shoes to show you. Obviously had to mention my new coach shoes. Again, if you didn't see my Toronto vlog then, you wouldn't have seen these shoes and um, I actually got these at the coach outlet at Niagara Falls my cousin and I popped in um on the way back home from Niagara Falls and I saw them and I was just like at first I was like oh my god they're so hideous and then the more I looked at them I was like I actually am obsessed with them we actually got in the car to leave and I was like my cousin said to me you want those shoes don't you and I was like yeah <laughs> so we went back to get them and listen they haven't been worn yet they're super super cool um and they looked really nice with my brown tights as well, which I thought was quite a cool and different look. Oh, and I was also gifted this croissant bag from Kate Spade. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like, the thing is, I don't usually wear bags like this. It's literally like a clutch, but like an under the shoulder clutch because it's quite big. And I think that those bags are really cool. I've just never really worn them before. So um, I'm like unsure, but I think it's the cutest thing ever. So I'm kind of unsure, but I think it's so, so cute. And I am going to Paris in December. So maybe I should take this with me and give it a spin in Paris. Or do you guys think that's too much? Keep it in London. Oh, it does actually have a strap. It has a strap, which is better. I just feel like it's really, really cute. I love the color and I think it's like subtle enough that it's not definitely a croissant, but it just kind of, if you, if you look twice, you can kind of tell that it's a croissant, which I actually think is really fun. 
because I love croissants well almond croissants so guys that is it from me today I really hope you loved the outfits and it gave you a little bit of inspiration um I know you guys like to see what I'm wearing um because sometimes when I show you like the hauls um you know I say that I like everything but it's more interesting to see what I'm actually wearing um so there you go don't forget the flossy by freddy overture restock is live now I can't wait to see you all styling your flossy dresses and autumn winter is coming soon thank you guys so so much for watching and I'll see you all next week